Hey kids, I wanted to talk about these uh, fancy new heat shrink guys that have low melt solder built right into them. Now I do a lot of uh, a lot of harnesses for people, and they want <clears throat> as close to no solder solutions as possible. And sometimes I use the the little actual solderless connections, but a lot of times they're just you know wanting a, a little bit of lead. Uh, added and then they're going to splice their wires together and uh, you know as we know the the traditional preferred way to splice is to jam your little wires together and give them a little give them a little twist like that and then we'll drop a little solder on here and what we're going to do is a test to see exactly how easy and effective these little gizmos are specifically do they give you a good connection but more to the point <coughs> um, you're supposed to use a heat gun with these and not everybody has a heat gun, so can you use other things besides a heat gun? So there's my my traditionally soldered wire. And I'm going to use my heat shrink here. And this is a, a heat gun just like one of the big hair dryer looking ones. It's just it happens to be a part of my soldering station. So there we go. Okay, so that's a that's a traditionally spliced wire. Uh, so let's try these. Okay, so the way this works, there's a few different components on here. You've got a, a standard clear heat shrink with low melt solder in the middle, and then these little red bands are actually. Um, sticky like elastic bands that help hold the wires in uh, and you want to do those first because it holds everything together in the middle there okay so something right about like that right so let's use our heat gun. This is the way they want you to use it. And we're going to melt that red band first. I like this heat gun because I can get right up on stuff and not burn the crap out of myself. And then what you'll notice, I'm going to try and do this without melting my laptop, is when you hit that low melt solder, it will start to liquefy. And get all shiny. Now, being low melt solder, it takes forever to cool off. This will actually stay flexible and flowy for quite a while. So I'm just going to let it sit there. Here, we'll finish up our our heat shrink on the ends here, just so that everything's copacetic. <clears throat> so we know it works with a heat gun, but uh, I've actually had people, you know request these or request something uh, like this kind of a solution but they don't have a heat gun so uh, I thought wouldn't it be cool if we could see if you could do it with a Zippo so what we're gonna do and I've done a few tests on this so I'm gonna give you the secret of how you can do it with a Zippo because if you just do it with a Zippo what happens is it absolutely melts the solder and then the whole thing catches on fire and comes apart. Ah! So, what you gotta do is jam your little wires in just like you do on the other one. 
So you want your bare wires in the middle where that solder is. And as long as you, let's do the red ones first so that we can get it to grab on us. As long as you keep it moving, even though it turns black, it's fine, it's fine, it's turning black, it's fine. As long as you keep it moving, it won't melt through the casing and you can wipe that black off. Let's try a, a candle. We'll get one more here. And once these are cooled off, what we're going to do is we're going to cut into them and see how well they penetrated. I think it's actually going to work a little bit better with a candle than that big ass flame on a Zippo. This is a little more exact. So again, I've got my, my wires positioned and I'm just going to continually rotate this like a little rotisserie. I'm going to do my, my red bands first because that's going to grab on and give me some assistance here. And even though it's turning black, I can still see when it starts to flow that solder. All right, so let's let that one cool off. So we'll go in order of how we did these. Uh, so this is obviously the first one that we did the traditional way. So let's just slice right through that bad boy. You know, and obviously we got really good penetration all the way through. This, okay, it's cool now. This is the one we did with a heat gun. I'm seeing some strands, but you know, all in all, that's a pretty good, a pretty good melt. Let's see about this one. Okay, it's cool now. This is the one we did with the Zippo. Now the first thing I notice is it actually did burn through the through the casing right there. That Zippo flame was just a little too unruly. But good melt. Really good even penetration. And this is the one we did with a candle. Didn't burn through. And good solid penetration. So the bottom line is, these are great. They work best, obviously, with a heat gun. I have tried them with a hair dryer. Does not work hair dryer. I mean, unless you're maybe, you've got some kind of you know, super fancy nuclear hair dryer or something, but uh, I tried it with uh, with my daughter's fancy hundred dollar hair dryer, and it would not do it. It melts everything except the low melt solder. Um, so obviously, they want you to do it with a heat gun, but if you don't happen to have a heat gun, a small controllable flame like a bic lighter or a candle will work so long as you keep it moving uh, through the process and um, seems to work like a champ so um, you know these are these are a viable option they're uh, under t I, I don't remember exactly it's under ten dollars for a pack of 50 of them a pack of a hundred of them um, so yeah um, no, that's a pack of 50 of them. So it's like five, six, seven bucks, something like that for a pack of 50 of them. Um, so, you know, good viable option. Worth a try.